Welcome back, Nature and Code. We're in chapter four, and in the last video, we just developed this code um, generating a sequence, which is an array of um, bases, A, G, C, or T, and then uh, making copy of this original sequence and adding it to an array, which we called sequences, which is our population of sequences. Now, what I would like to do in this video is, first of all, I would like to print the sequence or the sequences that we have. And in the second uh, step, I would like to um, go through um, time and change uh, random bases based on a mutation rate and then see what that does to the genetic variation in this population. So let's, uh, let's do the first uh, the first task of printing the sequences into the console. And uh, I'm going to call a function print sequences, which I haven't defined yet, but print sequences should just print the sequences into the console. All right, so I'm going to define this function here, function print sequences. All right. And um, so what this function should do is it should essentially go through all the, um, all the sequences. And then for each sequence, it should go through each base and um, print the base into the console. Now, there's two ways of doing this. Uh, on the one hand, we could, we could set up two for loops, one nested within the other, um, and do all of this here within print sequences. Another way would be to say, well, let's just let's just separate these two for loops into two different functions and split the responsibility uh, between these two functions. And that's what I'm going to do in this particular uh, example. In the next in the next step, when we're actually going uh, through time and change basis um, according to mutation rate, then I'm going to show you how you would nest loops rather than splitting them up into different functions. So here what I need to do is um, I basically need to go through all of my sequences. So I'm just going to set up this loop here, uh, var i equals zero, um, i is smaller than a number of sequences, which we have defined previously. And then of course, i equals i plus one. So here, this, uh, this loop is iterating uh, as many times as it's defined in number of sequences. And now I have this uh, sequences array here where I pushed uh, all, the, uh, all the sequences uh, into. So sequences i is going to be a sequence at this given position i in the sequences array. Now again, I could now set up a for loop right here and loop over over the elements in this array here, which would uh, be the basis, and then print that into the console. However, I'm just going to call another function. I'm going to call that print sequence. And notice the singular here. And uh, then I'm basically just going to pass the current sequence. Um, as an argument, as a parameter to this function. And so now this function has to deal with the actual printing. So let's go ahead uh, and define a function print sequence. Again, notice the uh, singular versus the plural up here, print sequences, print sequence. And this function here takes, an, uh, takes a parameter. So we have to define one argument here. And I'm just going to call this sequence. And um, now I'm going to go ahead and print this. So uh, what I could do is I could, of course, simply set up another loop. Um, I is smaller than. So here I'm going to say sequences length. Uh, sorry, sequence length. It's important. Sequence refers here to this parameter, which is the array of bases. So this will give me the number of bases it has in here. You could, of course, also use uh, simply this variable that we defined up here, which would have the same value. 
I'm just going to use here the length property of this array. All right, and now I'm going to say i equals i plus 1. And now I could, in principle, simply just log the base, which would be here sequence i. However, that would um, stack all the bases um, vertically, but I actually want to have one nice horizontal line without any line breaks for a single um, DNA sequence. So I'm going to use string concatenation. So I'm going to set up a variable here um, that I'm going to call sequence, sequence string. I'm going to initialize this to be the empty string. And then I'm simply going to say um, sequence string equals sequence string plus this sequence. Okay, so I'm adding, uh, iteratively, I'm adding this base here at this particular position at the end uh, to this sequence string. And then once, once I'm done with the loop and once I've added all the bases to that string, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to console log, so print the string into the uh, console sequence string. And that's it. This will work. Uh, so just to uh, verify, let's uh, go over to the browser, reload this page, and indeed, here it is. And you might say, well, but we should see a hundred strings and you're in principle uh, quite right. However, Chrome here um, is being nice and is recognizing that we would print this, the exact same string 100 times. So it just says, you know what? I'm going to save myself uh, the hassle. I'm just going to print this one string one time. And then I'm going to say, look here, um, I would actually have to print this a hundred times, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to say here, look, I'm going to print this exact same string a hundred times. If you load this in another browser, this might look slightly different. <clears throat> and then, of course, if you reload this page, you will just get different different strings. So this works. Uh, and I just want you to reflect here on the fact that I separated this for loop from this for loop. So basically, I first went through all the sequences in this for loop. But then rather than having a, a, a for loop now right here, I said, you know what, I'm going to um, split this functionality out into another function uh, that I'm going to call print sequence. And now I'm going to set up the for loop in here. But realize that this is uh, another version of essentially a nested loop. All right, so now in the second step, what I would like to do is I would like to um, introduce mutations. So I'm going to call a function here, run uh, generations. And what this function does is as follows. So um, I'm going to set it up here, function run generations. What I would like it to do is I would like to now, for a certain number of generations, I would like to go through all the sequences and then in each sequence go through all the bases and basically say um, with a certain probability, which is given by the mutation rate, I am going to mutate this base. And so for that I need to set up uh, two variables before, um, which I haven't defined yet. One is the number of generations. So how many generations do we actually want to do this? number of generations. I'm going to say 100 here. And then the other is the mutation rate. So what is the this probability of mutating a base per, uh, you know, for each base per generation? And I'm going to define this as um, uh, 1 in 100 or, you know, let's do 1 in 1,000 or, you know, let's do 1 in 10,000 here. Uh, so 0 0.0001. So this is uh, this is going to be a rare event, right? And this is the mutation rate per base and per generation. Okay, so let's go down here. 
So let's um, let's go through all the generations uh, by setting up uh, a for loop. So now i is smaller than the um, the uh, number of generations. Number of generations. I plus one. Okay, so this whatever I'm going to do here is going to happen at each generation, right? Okay, what do I want to do at each generation? Well, I want to go through each sequence. I'm going to set up another loop. And now I have to be careful. If I would do this, var i equals zero and so on, I would, uh, this would not be correct. I mean, it would technically be correct, but um, it wouldn't do what you, what you want to achieve because this i here is now the same as this i because uh, they're both in the same local scope of this function. So this i would mess uh, with the value of the i that you're using here. And you don't want to do that. So uh, one version uh, is just to say, well, you know, just going to use another variable here. Uh, you often see var j uh, for the second loop, the nested loop. I prefer to use ii because uh, that makes it much easier for me to instantly see, you know, which level uh, of nesting am I currently at? But this is really sort of a personal preference. You can call this variable whatever you want to. And then I'm going to say um, sequences length. Sequences length. So that is the number of sequences that I have. Again, you could instead use this variable here. Um, this just Two different ways of doing the exact same thing because they will both uh, have the same value in this example here and then ii equals ii plus one so now here right i'm going through each sequence and now within each sequence i would like to go through each base pair so the exact same logic and i'm going to use here iii equals zero iii is smaller than again there's uh, many different ways to do this you could just say you know the number of of uh, bases or or uh, what do we call it we call it sequence length you could do that you could also say well of the sequence that i'm currently at which is sequences ii the length property right which will which will um be uh, the value representing the number of elements in this particular array here. So this is going to be 20. Again, uh, many different ways of doing the exact same thing. And finally, iii equals iii plus 1. And now I'm here for each base pair, or for each base. So this looks this looks kind of uh, you know intimidating maybe a little bit but but I hope as you have uh, you know just watched me developing this it is really quite simple they're just nested and now you're going um, first over the number of generations and then over the number of um, uh, sequences that you have in the population and then for each sequence over the number of bases that you have in each of those sequences so now i would simply like to say well okay with a certain probability which is given by the mutation rate i would like to mutate this particular uh, base that i'm currently at so the particular uh, base that i'm currently looking at is uh the base of this particular sequence so sequences ii right that's the oops ii that's the that's the current sequence that i'm at in in this loop here the second loop and now I'm just going to say well I want the base at the current uh, index which is iii here from this loop and so this should be a random base and we've already defined this function now there's something missing here right now I'm doing this for each base um, and I don't want to do this. I said I only want to do this with a certain probability, which is given by the mutation rate. So really what we need here, we need this condition um, that says, well, if um, if this condition is met, then, then we will do this. And this condition is mat random being smaller than my mutation rate. 
right? This is the same logic that we developed in the uh, that we developed in the genetic drift um, videos. So basically, you have a rate here or a probability, and if you want to do something um, at that rate or with that probability, you just have to basically th you know throw a random number between zero and one, and then say, well, if that random number is smaller than the probability, then it is going to happen. So that's it. Um, basically, all I have to do now here is after I've run the generations, I have to print the sequences again, and um, and see what happens. So I'm going to save this, and uh, I'm going to go over here and reload this. And so here you can now see what's happening. So this is the output from the first um, from the first original population. Now here we see many many different versions that we created through mutation. Uh, some of them uh, still occur many times. So this particular version, for example, of the sequence occurs at 20 20%. 20 so 20 of the strings are of this type, 21 are of this type, but you can see quite a bit of variation and usually they they are different from each other by maybe one or perhaps two base pairs. And if you reload this, um, this can look quite different, like here. Um, here we have an example where we do get a lot of genetic variation. Uh, here even more, it seems. But you can see quite a bit of genetic variation, or quite a lot here. Um, simply from this code, which says, I have a small population of 100 sequences with 20 bases, and I'm going to... Uh, mutate those spaces with the probability of 1 in 10,000 per generation. And if you do this just 100 generations, you already get quite uh, the genetic variation here. So, you know, even though this looks like a seemingly small number, very quickly you get a lot of variation in this population. So um, that establishes the fact that mutation can generate uh, substantial genetic variation and can do so fairly quickly depending on the mutation rate. Um, we introduced this concept of nested loops which looks a little intimidating but really isn't if you uh, if you think your way through it it's actually quite simple it's simply a nesting of those loops. Now in the next video I'd like to clean up some things here we're doing some things almost correctly but not quite uh, correctly and we have some cleanup to do also in terms of uh, in terms of the output so uh, I'll see you in the next video